Good morning, friends. How's everyone doing today? Well, I'm so thankful I'm happy to be back in the garden with you again. And I really need to get things cleaned up because not only am I seeing daffodil foliage and buds emerge from the ground, I'm even seeing alliums. So this day starts full on garden cleanup. But before we get around to that, I need to go ahead and harvest some hyacinths that I've been forcing for Valentine's sales. So let's go ahead and head inside and get a vase full of those ready for a customer. And then we'll head back to the hydrangea room, get the wall back there painted up, get some hellebores planted, hydrangeas pruned. It's just gonna be a great day. I'm so thankful that things are starting to warm up. I'm just so glad to be back in the garden with you. So I started these hyacinths on January 1st and today's February 6th, so just a little bit longer than a month before I had some ready to pick. Now this is kind of a messy job to pull them all out. So let's go ahead and take these two trays outside and then we'll get them harvested, cleaned up, and we actually have to cut the bulb to give them the longest vase life. But aren't they gorgeous? These are Woodstock hyacinths. So in order to get a nice long stem on these hyacinths, I like to pull them and then I'm going to cut the four corners of the bulb. And then we'll end up with something that looks like this. So the bulb and the basal plate is still attached. It gives us a little more stem length and it really helps with the base life. How's that for Valentine's flowers? Better than roses? What do you think? I sure do wish that we had smell-o-vision because these Woodstock hyacinths smell absolutely phenomenal. So now I'll just cut off the sides of the bulb. We'll wash that off inside and we'll have a really nice long stem length from these hyacinths and a great base life. So I still need to take these inside and get them washed up really good before I put them in their final vase. But this is just such a great way to have cut flowers in the dead of winter. I got them all washed up and my customer will be here in about 30 minutes. I did go ahead and even wash in between the leaves just because there's so much soil held within the leaves near the bulb. And I do struggle a lot with the type of vase that's right for hyacinths. And I was doing some measuring and it seems like for the size that I have, five inches tall is really ideal. Gracie, what do you think? Do they smell good? Well, it just feels so good to be selling cut flowers again. And it looks like I have another buyer for the remainder of the hyacinths that I've been forcing. I wanna give you a quick update on the library before we tackle the hydrangea room and also talk about a different way that I'm going to approach cleanup this year. But let me show you a quick library update first. Since the last time you saw the garden library, Josh has laid the flooring and doesn't it look beautiful? It's a perfect match for the siding. I love how that feeling just continues right on. And I don't think I wanna cover up this floor. I originally thought I would put a carpet down in here, but this floor is so beautiful. I don't think I wanna cover it up. So the main thing that he's been doing, cause we just got power out here yesterday, is that he's been framing in the bookcases so you can see them on either side. He's going to put the shelves on pegs so that if we want some shelving close together at one point, but then we want to extend it and make it wider, we can do that. He's building a mantle for right here. We'll leave this open for artwork and maybe some lighting. And there's our power. Oh, I can show you the trench. So the trench takes off from the garage and it comes all the way back here to the library. So I think I'll have to mark this line so I don't dig where it's located at, but I'm hoping for one final snow so I can sit inside the library with a cozy book and now I can plug a lamp in and a heater and I can sit inside the library, watch the snow fall, 
Oh my goodness, friends, it is just so exciting. So now let's go ahead and tackle some garden cleanup. I've decided to take the garden cleanup this year room by room. And what I wanna do is not only clean up that room, but also make it as beautiful as possible right now. If there's perennials or shrubs I wanna add into the garden, I wanna go ahead and get those in now. Because what I want to do is basically, you know, what I used to do in the past is I would prune all my hydrangeas all at once. And that would take like a whole week. I would be all over the property and all the different gardens. And I just felt like I was never really accomplishing anything. And I was never able to relax in any of my garden spaces because they were never fully cleaned up until I would say almost May because pretty much all my gardens are just really high maintenance and high intensity. This year, I wanna do things totally different. I'm gonna clean up it room by room. I'm gonna make that room beautiful and I'm not gonna move on from that room until I feel like I can sit in that garden room, be at peace and relax. And at that point, then I'll move on to another garden area. So that's the plan and I'm excited because we should be able to plant a lot more beautiful things earlier on in the season. But enough talking, we have a lot of work to get around to. Let's finish painting the garage first. Well, that makes such a huge difference. I need to do another coat up at the top, but I think I'll wait until my husband gets home to work on that. I just can't believe how different the entire garden looks with this really dark charcoal garage. I can't wait to see everything wake up. Now it's going to be like seeing the garden come to life in front of a whole new backdrop. So the window there, there was this white and silver paint that was basically impossible to remove from the window itself. So I think I'm just gonna paint that entire window black. I think it looks really silly now. I need to get another can of paint for up at the top, but this is really good in terms of being able to move on. Here's the hellebores that I picked up. These are Honey Hill Joy hellebores, and I have these throughout the hydrangea room. I just picked up two today. I think I'll pick up some more in the days to come as we continue to work on this garden. And I wish I could remember the name of this one that we planted last year with this great variegated foliage. It blooms really, really early. I think this one was blooming in late January for me. But you can kind of see here the feverfew, all the daffodils and the irises, the foxglove are there. And we do have anemones in here too. Want the stick? Here you go. So now that we got those new hellebores in the ground and we'll be adding lots more this month, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the foliage on my older hellebores. A lot of these leaves have winter damage, so I just like to clean them up and let all new fresh leaves emerge from the base. Now this hellebore doesn't really look too bad at all. So I think I'm not gonna cut that one back at all versus this one had a lot of winter damage, a lot of spots on the leaves, which is a sign of disease. But if I see a hellebore that looks like this and the leaves from last year look pretty good, I just leave it alone.
So I was just about to prune this coral berry plant, but I noticed that a lot of the stems are covered in what appears to me to be mealybugs. So I went into the main flower walk where I have another coral berry and I see that that one also has what appears to be a pretty serious infestation of mealybugs. So I was gonna move both of these to the driveway garden, but to be honest in my area, it's not really a plant that I feel does very well. The pink berries are present only for a small period of time before they kind of just turn to brown mush. And I can only assume after having them for a few years, that's just due to all the rain that we get. But seeing the presence of mealybugs all over these stems, let me give you a close up on that. It just makes me think I want to remove these shrubs altogether and replace them with more hydrangeas. And now that I think about it, I'm almost positive that I saw mealybugs on this plant around the same time last year. So just one more reason to go ahead and eliminate it from the garden and put another hydrangea in its place. Now, speaking of hydrangeas and bugs, I don't think I've ever mentioned before that I deal with cane borers on some of my older smooth hydrangeas. It's never really gotten to the point where it's a serious problem. It's never really hurt the plant, but I wanna show you what cane borer damage looks like on a hydrangea. And then all I do is prune it back to the point where I don't see that kind of damage anymore. So let me give you a close up. So I cut most of it out, but you can see some is present a little bit here. So you see the green area, which tells you the branch is still alive. And then you see kind of this darker ring here. And usually the center is dark too. I'll just continue to cut that back. There's a better view on it. No, that's fine. So I would just prune it to the point where it looks like that. Could prune it down even further, really. So I noticed this happening more so on my older hydrangeas. This Haas Halo, I think is eight or nine years old now but there's kind of this darker ring once you cut into the stem. And then sometimes it's hollow, sometimes it's um, like a dark, wet looking color in the center if it's not healthy. Here's a healthy cut. So this looks good, I'm not worried about that. This I am worried about, so I wanna take it down further until I don't see that anymore. I could still see it, so I'm gonna take it down even further. Okay, now we're good. But for today, I'm just gonna continue to clean up this garden and I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there in your gardens and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.